Ooh, that looks tasty. Thank you for calling Amaze Balls Air. We understand that you would like to book a flight from Havana, Cuba to Bogota, Colombia. This is fantastic news because I have a fantastic flight just for you. You'll take off from Havana and fly direct to London, England. From there, a quick, quick flight over to Mumbai. From there, we'll take you straight to Nairobi and from Nairobi directly to Bogota. Thank you for flying Amazeballs Air. Welcome, folks. Today, The Hungry Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview. And today we are talking about Connecting Flights, designed by Rafa David with art by Douglas Duarte. And I do apologize if I mispronounced any of those names. Now, before I begin, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles, because if I make any errors in the rules overview, that's where you'll find those corrections. Additionally, I do need to point out that everything that you see here is still in the prototype phase and is subject to change. Now, what Connecting Flights is, is it is a game where you are trying to build the best airline by creating the best flights across and around the world, getting passengers back home where they want to go. And the game is playable either in a competitive mode or in a solo or co-op, but only two player mode. And that is the version of the game that I focused on that I played the most. I will talk a little bit about how the competitive version works, but do understand that I have not played that version. I've only played the cooperative mode of the game. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played, just want to jump ahead to my final thoughts, then you want to go to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's talk about how this game works. So what's going to happen is this game is going to play out over the course of 10 rounds. And by the end of the 10 rounds, you need to have gotten all of the passengers off of the board. To get them off the board, you simply have to take them home. And in a lovely color-coded style, you can see that passengers are trying to go back to their continents of origin, as you can see based on the colors right there. And if you're able to do that before 10 turns is up, you will win. If you can't, you have lost. On the surface, that seems quite simple because you can see there's all, there, the game only starts with about 15 passengers out there, but every single turn you're going to be adding more passengers to the board like so. So here you'll see that in New York there's going to be a new green passenger who wants to go home to Oceana. In Santiago you're going to get a red passenger who wants to go back to Africa. And in Shanghai you're going to get a passenger who wants to go back to North America. And as the game goes through you'll be getting between three and five new meeples out on the board every single turn. So how do you get them home? That is the big question. Well, to do that, you're going to be making use of this lovely board right here. And what this has on it is it has your marketplace. And on the marketplace, you'll be able to buy new planes. And I'll tell you how planes work in a minute. And you'll be able to buy passengers. And these passengers are going home to certain places. And these work a little bit differently in the competitive game, but in the solo co-op game, it's basically your way to take someone to a continent, and you can go to any city on that continent. Additionally, you're able to buy fuel down here, and I'll show you how fuel works in just a minute, and then out at the bottom, that's just your getting new meeples out onto the board. And then I'll just point out here, up at the top, you're able to charter flights, which is just a way to move passengers around between cities on the same continent. Then after you've done your marketplace, you go to the fly stage. And that's when you're going to use your planes and your passengers and your airports. And you're going to be able to either purchase airports, which means they're permanently yours, or you're able to purchase for one turn only what are called landing rights. And so that here would mean that I'm able to just land right over here in Athens, whereas here in London, if I actually have an airport, I'm able to always take off and land there. So just for visual purposes, you'll see here, if I purchased Athens, I'll get this airport right over here in Athens, which is just off the screen you can't see, but then I would be able to use this every single turn. Now, to make a flight, you will need two airports, one to take off from, and the one you take off from you must actually own. So we'll say we're taking off from Athens right here, and you're going to be going somewhere. In this case, we'll say we're trying to get this passenger right here back home to somewhere in Asia. And so we'll say I'm starting here in Athens. I happen to have an airport there. And let's say I also happen to own an airport here in Bangkok. So we'll see I have both of those right there. However, you need more than that. Obviously, you have to have a plane. And the plane can be of any size. It does not matter. So we'll just say for the sake of argument that I have this big old three-star jet right here. And so what I would do is I would start with my Athens airport, then I would place down right next to it 
my plane. And then next to that, I would have to have my passenger. And here I have my passenger right here. I'll place him right down. And then I have my final destination, which as we already talked about, was going to be Bangkok. And I either have that airport or as I said earlier, I've purchased the landing rights there. And you'll know that your flight is valid because you can simply follow the line right like that. Now, you might be wondering, what, what's the point of the stars? The stars has to have to do with the type of passenger and what class they are flying. And again, pictorially, you'll see that it works. As you can see, you're coming out right there and moving into this one-star airport. However, if we were flying a two-star passenger, you'll see that it still works here as I come out of the plane, but over here where I have my airport, there is no lounge, no business class lounge for that passenger. So that passenger won't fly into Athens. They would only fly into a two-star airport. But for the sake of our argument, here we go. Then the next thing I would need to do is I would need to make sure I have enough fuel. How much fuel you need depends on are you flying north to south, east to west, or are you crossing other continents? In this case, because I'm flying east to west, I would need to have three fuel to make that flight. Then I've done that, I've gotten my passenger there, hooray for me. Now, what I can also do is, you can make legs longer and longer. So let's just say that I'd flown here, but not, but instead of just flying my one pink passenger, let's say that I also flew a purple passenger was also starting out in Athens. Well, if I happen to have the right stuff and I had another plane, which in this case here I have a two-star plane, I could place that down. And then if I had another passenger, this time going to South America, I could place that there. And then of course, I just have to have somewhere to land. And we'll assume that I purchased some landing rights in Bogota. And then again, because this time, because I'm flying all the way from here, all the way across the continent, I would need four fuel for that. But now I've gone and I've dropped off my passenger back home in Shanghai. And then I've continued on from Shanghai and dropped someone off in South America, thus clearing them from the board. Now, that's pretty much it. In the solo, in the solo co-op game, you'll wind up getting a set amount of income each turn, that being 45 money, which you get to spend, and the next turn to buy more and more stuff. And so if you are able to clear the board before 10 turns is up, then you have won. If you can't, you have lost. Now, there are a few things that are different in the multiplayer game. First of all, that second board that I showed you is actually different, and you wind up using this other side here, you'll see you have your leaderboard, you get income per passenger, you have airline income, you have taxes, and the market face is actually more of an auction. So that in itself is a little bit different. In addition to that, there are a bunch of extra cards in the game. You have sabotage cards, which will take effect and the card will tell you when it happens. So you're able to harm your opponents. In addition to that, you will be dealing with a variety of events, again, which will just change up what is going on on the board. And finally, each player will have their own passport, which is their own asymmetric player power. Again, just making the game a little bit different. And then, of course, in that one, at the end of the 10 turns, whoever has the most points, the most money will be the winner. So what do I like about this game? First of all, again, I can really only speak to the solo co-op mode. I do like that it is a brain-burning, brain-melting puzzle. It is really hard to figure out how you are going to do this, especially if you're playing in the co-op variant, which means each player has their own airline and you're not allowed to share any cards. And while that is significantly harder, and it means sometimes you have to double up and both have purchased an airport somewhere so you can do trade-offs and pass-offs, it is very satisfying when you're passing passengers around and you're sending them on these crazy flights where you're really you're just trying to get from Havana to Bogota, but as it just works out, one player has the airport in Havana, so you're actually sending them from Havana to Mumbai, and then from Mumbai to where you both have an airport in Nairobi, and then from Nairobi, you're sending them back over to Bogota, which should have been a tiny little flight, but really you just flew them all the way around the world, and it is ridiculous, and sounds like a horrible flight, but it is really satisfying when you find a way to do that. It's really satisfying when you suddenly clear, in one turn, you and your partner clear out half of the board's meeples. It's just delightful. Along with it, I really do appreciate how the creation of the flights work, the way the color line syncs up, the way the passengers sync up, the way it very clearly tells you how much fuel you're going to need is really well done. And also the way it looks, the way it plays out, it's also a very satisfying thing to do. And then the last thing I'll say about it is I really appreciate how tight the market is. You never, ever, 
ever feel like you have enough money in this game. You are always making hard choices of, do I want to buy one of these electric planes that are more expensive, but will never cost me any fuel and I never have to worry about fuel trucks and running out of fuel and blah, 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 blah. Or do I just want to buy something cheaper and buy the fuel and then hope I can plan accordingly from there. And especially in the co-op game, who is going to buy the passenger going to, to North America or South America? Who is going to buy what airport? Who's going to get what? And how are you going to share? Because of course, these things are also limited. For example, in the one star airports, there's only one car. So that means if someone owns Lagos, no one else is able to then buy landing rights to that airport because there is only one card. So the market is very, very tight. All of that I really appreciate. So what are my quibbles with the solo co-op game? And I only have a couple. The first one is it's really, really hard at first. I do feel like it is a little bit solvable. The first game that my wife and I played, it was brutal. And we played a couple of rules wrong to, wrong, to be fair, but we still have won on turn eight, we thought there was no chance. And in subsequent games after that, it was no problem. I mean, there were still moments when it felt like it was hard and it was still a satisfying puzzle, but we still won on turn eight or turn seven. And we didn't feel like we were going to lose. Yes, we could up the difficulty a little bit, which makes shuttling people around continents harder, but really that's it. And yes, maybe the luck of the draw would have gone against us, but it feels like it's a little bit solvable. Now, that said, there are is a stretch goal of different scenarios for the solo and co-op game, which would vary the setup, which I think would add replayability to the game. But as it stands, I think it's perhaps a little bit solvable. My second quibble is, it's disappointing to me that it's only solo and two player, and that when you play two player, really all it does is it just makes the game harder. It's just harder to play two player than when you play one player. And there is such a satisfying feeling when you clear the board. I think if there was a way to play this game at three or four players co-op, that would be really, really fun. How you do that, I have no idea. But I think it, you're kind of losing out a little bit on this game because you can only play it solo co-op in this particular mode. Then my, my last quibble is when you're playing the solo co-op mode, you miss out on, on a lot of the complexity. In the competitive version, you have all those other cards. You have the, your have a varied income each round based on how well you did and you have the sabotages and you have the events, you have the variable player powers. And the game is just all around a little bit more complex and more complex in what I think is a good way. And it's perhaps a little bit disappointing that you miss out on that in the solo co-op mode. Now, to talk briefly about my thoughts about the competitive mode, I think what you're going to find with that is it is a very satisfying engine builder. It's one that, again, has probably a very tight market and is extremely, extremely cut throat. There's nothing about the way the competitive mode is written that makes me think it is anything but that. But again, I haven't played it, so I don't know for sure. So there you have it, folks. That is Connecting Flights. I think this is a very brain-melting type puzzle. And I think if you are someone who's going to play this game competitive and co-op solo, then this is absolutely worth checking out if you like that long-term planning, brain-melting puzzle type game because it is not a fast game. You're going to stare at the board for a while and your 10 turns, it might take you two hours to play that if you're playing with other people. So just keep that in mind. But if you like that kind of thing, you're going to play both modes, then I think this is definitely one to check out. I also will say that if they unlock the stretch goals of solo co-op scenarios, then it is worth checking out for solo co-op only. I don't think I can recommend this as solo co-op only because I do wonder if it is not somewhat solvable. So do keep an eye on whether they unlock those solo scenarios or not. Or if you're just looking at this game as someone who wants a cutthroat, economic, engine building, long-term planning style game, and you want something cutthroat, then again, this is one definitely worth checking out. So there you have it, folks. That is Connecting Flights. If you're looking at this game as a competitive player only, Definitely worth checking out. I think it's doing a lot of really cool stuff, especially the way the flight mechanics work. If you're looking at it for solo co-op only, keep an eye on the campaign. If they unlock those solo scenarios, then I think potentially you do have here something worth picking up just for the co-op mode. And I can only reinforce that if they find a way to do more than just two players. But as always, if I made any mistakes in the rules overview, please let me know in the comments with the timestamp. I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.